When it comes to product photography, you only really need two backgrounds. It's great if you can have more of them, but the two backgrounds you absolutely need, it's a paper gray background and a translucent diffusion material background. Now, today we will look at the first one, the paper background, and we will create all these looks with just this one background. You can purchase these paper backgrounds from Amazon. I think for the 53 inches, the one I have over there, um, roll, it's about $40, and you can buy them in 26 inches like this for about $20. So they're very affordable. This one, it gives you like, I think it's 36 feet of paper. So it's, it will last you for many years to come. Now, the colors I chose for the grays, I chose the fashion gray. That's what we will be working with today. So let's go right into it. Today we will be photographing a body lotion. This is just a body lotion for Victoria's Secret and we're not going to create any kind of magical, amazing photo. I'm just going to do this demonstration to show you how versatile this gray background could be. So I have my paper background on a C-stand. If you do not own a system, do not worry. You can just cut a piece of paper from the roll and tape it with a uh, painter's tape onto your wall and that could be your background. Now, for today's um, demonstration, I will be using two props. These are wooden props. These are from uh, Mad Props. They're solid wood, they're very heavy. They're very good material. We're just gonna stack them like this and put our product right here and that will be our styling for this product. So let's see. I will go with something like this. There you go, our product is styled. Now for the lights, I will be using this Godox Explorer 100. They are small little lights and they're powerful. I love them because they have a round head and I can also use modifiers with magnets. So that makes it really easy to gel or attach all kinds of modifiers. You do not need to use these lights. You can use whatever you have, continuous lights, speed lights. You can buy speed lights from Godox for about, I looked this morning on Amazon, you can buy them as low as $50 and those will work just fine. But I do love the round head and I will show you why in this video. So this is the light we'll be using. Now for the softbox, I will be using this one softbox and I'm going to put my speed light right here onto the softbox. Let's see, something like that. Great, so our product, it's styled. I need to make sure I frame it. And let's see, I'm going to put it right in the middle to make sure it's leveled. something like that and I will acquire focus. Now my soft box, I placed it on the right side of the product and it's kind of facing a little bit forward. So it's at an angle and let's take a shot. And that is looking great, but the left side of the image is very underexposed and I don't want to put another light, so what I will be putting in there, it's a bounce card. I will be using, I love these things, this is from V-flat. It's just like foldable cards. They have them in white and black, so I will just be positioning this, something like this to bounce back some light. Now, let's take another shot. And now we got light all around our subject and it's looking wonderful. But wait a minute, our background is black, even though I have a gray paper background. So what can we do? We should put the light on the background. I will be placing another one of this Godox 100. And I'm just going to point at the background. Now the background power is one half. Let's see what happens. And as you can see, now we have a perfectly white background. Even though our background is gray, when it has a lot of light on it, it will become white. So we do not need a white background. We can turn a gray background into, well, we already saw it could be a black background, and now it's a white background. How do we get it to be a gray background? Well, we need to reduce the power of the light. Let's see what we get with 116 power.
and we're getting more gray. I would say that's probably the accurate color of the background. But can we get it to be a darker gray? Let's see, 164. Let's see what is going to look at 164 power. Great. Now we have that charcoal gray. Now, what if we want the background to have a color? Our product has, has pink and blue, so I'm thinking we can gel it. I have these gels, they are from Roscoe, and when you buy them, they come in big packs. They have lots of lots of gels, all the color you could imagine. And this is what we will be using today, one of these gels. Now, because my light has magnets and I said I can easily place uh, gel with these magnets, I will be using this piece over here and I will be using go light red kind of pinkish gel. And all I need to do is just place the gel and put the ring on with the magnet and that will hold it in place. Let's see what we get now. Well, now we got the darker red background. So that means we need to give it more light to turn it into pink. So let's increase the power to maybe 116. Let's see what 116 give us. Great. That is looking good. What if I want to add a second color, like our product X pink and blue? What if I want to add blue as well? Well, I can take another gel and I can put both of them one next to each other onto my light. Something like this. And I'll place my magnet in there. Let's see what we can now. Let's try something else. What if I wanna create that beautiful glow, like a circle, and then it gets darker and darker from behind the subject? What can I do? Well, one easy way to create that is by bringing the light closer to my background. Let's see, something like that. Let's see what happens if I take a photo from there. And that is too strong, the power, so I'm gonna take it down a lot. Let's see, I am going to do maybe 128 power. Let's try that. And that is looking better. You see, we have that nice gradient. We have the light ray behind the subject and it gets darker and darker as it goes to the outside. What if we want to add some color to that gradient? I can take my blue gel, let's say, and put it right there. Let's take a shot. Now, every time you put the gel on, it reduces the power of the light, so you might have to turn on the light a little bit more. So you see, it's a little bit dark, but you get the idea, it's looking great. What else can we use to change that gray background to get it into something interesting? Well, I will use these MagMod modifiers. It looks like this. And this one is just a rubber piece that goes around your speed light. And then this part over here has like a lens. And then on here you can attach gobos. Is this little things that shapes light? And they come in many, many shapes. You get like in big packages. And uh, gobos stand for go between objects. So those modifiers, they go inside of this frame and that will modify the way the light comes out. So let's try one of this on our gray background, see if we get a different look. I already have one of these on my light. So all I need to do is, I'll leave the blue gel in there. I'm gonna move it backwards a little bit. Let's see. I'll have to increase the power because every time you put a modifier, you will lose power. So I'm going to put this magnet piece that I have my gobo on it. I will just with magnets right there onto my modifier, onto my light. So let's take a shot. That's cool. Now we have like dots. Um, they, I have another one set up in here that it has 
stripes. So you see this gobo has like lines. So let's try this one. The polka dots look really nice. And we have blue polka dots, even though we just have a gray background. I'm gonna use the stripes by themselves, no gel. Let's see what we get now. That's kind of interesting. Let's try a different gobo. I will place, as you can see, these gobos, they come out like this. Let's go with something more fun. I will put this one in it. So the way they go, they just slide into this little pocket here. Very easy to put on. And then I will just apply it to my light with the magnets. And I will keep the blue gel in there. Let's see what we get. And that could be kind of fun, but I need to move it further away so it takes, so it like uh, projects over the whole background, not just uh, a little spot. I will increase the power a little bit and let's see what we get. And there you have it. Now, as you can see, we were able to create so many looks with just one boring, cheap paper background that is gray. Gray, it's so versatile and you can get so many looks with just a few light modifiers and gels and, you know, the possibilities are endless. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.